Welcome to The Profile. My name is Gary Dunn and I'm your host. The caterers have been in, the pro copy. You happy, John, with all the... Very happy. Another yeah. grape? Oh, or? no, I'm fine. No? Well, I just want to put this yeah. down the side here because I yeah. think yeah. my producer's giving me food. I think it's disrespectful Excellent. if I yeah. eat in front of you. I guess the water will show up soon. So, so um, yes, <laughs> tonight on the chair or the couch, we have uh, one guitar legend, Mr. John Meyer. Thank you for coming in, John. Thank you, Gary. Nice to, nice to be here. And I say that very sincerely, mate, because, you know, ever since I was 15, I used to follow you around watching you play in all sorts of different bands and you're, you're a big ins inspiration for me so. well thank you um, yeah. um what can i say I'm, I'm deeply touched i'm just going to be disrespectful and <laughs> yeah, just throw one that grape. grape at me now <laughs> so john where were you born uh i was born in uh, a little country town three springs wa yep which is about uh 80 kilometers southeast of geraldton right uh, my parents arrived here in the early 50s uh, Dutch immigrants, and uh, yeah, that's where I was born. And uh, so we sp probably spent the first seven or eight years in the wheat belt. And uh, yeah, uh, my dad had a, ended up with a trucking business, and our backyard was full of trucks. And <laughs> to this day, I look at trucks and then, wow, well, oh, I like <laughs> them. Yeah, they're great, you know. But uh, so that's rubbed yeah. off on you, trucks? Oh, uh, no, not really. Not no, really. no. But um, in, in a couple of the bands that I was in, yeah, I, I, I've driven a couple of trucks across the Nullarbor. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah. so what was the moment in your life that you decided that guitar was for you? Is, was it a musical family uh, as well? Or? No, my dad. Uh, yeah. Look, from day one, um, dad was a, a jazz nut. So I grew up listening to uh, Benny Goodman, Artie Shaw, yeah. Tommy Dorsey. Uh, occasionally he'd play Miles Davis, but he'd say... I don't like that bebop stuff. And I'm like, bebop, <laughs> you know. I'm like, wow. And then a bit later on, uh, uh, he he brought an album home by the Shadows, and I thought, wow, I, I love this. Mm. And then, um, and my dad played in a few bands as well, right. uh, late '50s, early '60s, and so quite often in our lounge room there'd be musicians there, and yeah. and uh, but there was a, a, a friend of my dad, uh, Ray Duff, his name was, and uh, he was a guitar player. And he'd sit in our lounge room with a, a Stratocaster and he'd play all these Shadows songs and just yeah. incredible. In fact, he still plays today. He wow. is. He's fantastic. And uh, uh, un, uh, unsung legend of Perth music, I reckon. Mm. But anyway, um, and I just thought, yeah, I love that. Um, I'd, I'd like to do that. And uh, But my dad, uh, he also played sax and clarinet. And uh, I had a few lessons, didn't work out. Uh, guitar didn't work out. Um, but I ended up with a drum kit, mm. and uh, and so the neighbours loved me, and uh, and my first band I was a drummer. Wow! Yeah. So and, and this was really neat, um, and you know I think bar chords put me off. You know, I didn't yeah. like the bar chords, and uh, yeah. but they were uh, hard when you were starting, weren't oh, they? But, man, yeah. you know, like and uh, but one day at rehearsal, uh, I remember in the band I was in, I probably would have been second year high, and and. Uh, uh, the singer was going, I can't sing to these chords. And um, he's looking at the sheet music and the guitar player's going, well, it's A, I'm playing A. And what's the little M stand for? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so I went home and my dad had a chord book. So I'm playing A minor. Hmm. And I went to rehearsal. I think he's supposed to play A minor. And the guitar player wasn't happy because he was a lot older than me and there's the drummer like who can barely walk. <laughs> Uh, telling him how to play the bar chord. You play it. So I did. <laughs> I am playing a bar chord. And yeah, so, yeah, kind of. Um, and But I was lucky because of dad, uh, there were guitars at home. There was a piano. There was a saxophone clarinet. Yeah. So I was able to, yeah, kind of, um, uh, yeah, try it all. But um, mm. but luckily there were a couple of guitars there. So I was able to work out some chords and it kind of, yeah, went from there really. Mm. So um, the first band you were in, um, Stu War, Stug War Express. <laughs> uh, Stug War Express, yeah. My producer's got an E here. It, uh, <laughs> uh, formed by a friend of mine at school, yep. uh, Barry Wright, yep. and and uh, he was an English guy, very humorous, and uh, he said, it's raw gut spilt backwards. Oh, right. oh okay. So, it is too. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and we, we did uh, some Zep covers and... Uh, 
John Mayle and the Blues Breakers and uh, yeah, and, and we started doing a few gigs at, uh, yeah, little little clubs and, you know, little just venues around the place really and uh, kind of, yeah, fell into it. So who would have been your biggest influence then? Would Zeppelin and bands like that uh, or? Actually, yeah, um, but just before that it was, uh, I was at a friend's house after school and um, his older brother was playing this music and, and I heard this guitar and I'm going, wow, what is that? And so I knocked on his door and, and he was the older brother, you know, mm. and he's going, what do you want? Yeah. You know, and I'm going, Neville, what, what, what's that music you're playing? And he said, uh, it's Eric Clapton, John Mallon, the Blues Breakers now, rack off. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, and, and uh, actually later on it wasn't Eric Clapton, it was Peter Green. All right, yeah. And, uh, and I thought, I just love the tone. And yeah, um, so. Went and bought some albums. Went out and yeah. bought the album straight away. Yeah. And uh, I had a, a record player set up at eye level, plugged into my little Bandmaster copy amp that my yeah. dad made. Yeah. He made the amp. And oh, wow. I'm not oh, thanks, you know. And like, I couldn't do that, you know. And uh, yeah, it worked out all the little yeah. clicks, as many as I could. Yeah. And. Uh, and then I read a few interviews with him and Eric Clapton and they were talking about guys like Muddy Waters and Elmore James and, yeah. and, uh, and just around that time I met a, 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 a bass player, Ed Browning his name was, who was a blues nut yeah. and he had all these albums. So I went around to his house. And Hung went, around there for wow, a while. <laughs> yeah, you know, and like, so yeah, blues, shadows and then, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple. Yeah, and they were all kind of blues based anyway. Yes, really. absolutely. Yeah, you know, and so what? Uh, Rudy and the Aardvarks would have been your first sort of major band where you were in the papers and things. That yeah, you, you know. Well, I think um, what actually happened is I, uh, I met uh, uh, a guy called Jeff Lally, drummer. Yeah, and uh, and he knew Rob and Wendy. They were brother and sister, and uh, and Rob ended up uh, he was bass player, and Wendy was his sister, and she was a singer. And uh, yeah, it was uh, immediately we got a lot of gigs, mm. <laughs> and I think mainly because of Wendy. Yeah, she uh, well, she's a great singer for starters, mm. um, but also she looked fantastic yeah. on stage. Uh, yeah, she uh, people kept saying, "Oh, can well, can you introduce me to the singer?" <laughs> no, no, not really, you know. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And. Um, we, we were in the Battle of the Bands one year and we, we didn't win it. I think we came third or something, but we won the audience vote. Was that the um, Hoadleys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and I it's remember... It's taking a wild guess. Yeah, <laughs> Hoadleys. <laughs> and, you know, and it was kind of... Uh, and we played our own songs mm. um, at, at the Battle of the Bands. And uh, so, yeah, that was... You've always been a songwriter, haven't you? From Oh, yes. Mm. I've tried. Mm. tried hard, mm. you know. So, um, I don't know. I think it's just sort of just yeah, uh, a natural progression, I yes. think, for yeah. me anyway. Yeah. You know? uh, to this day, whenever I pick up a guitar, yeah, it's, I don't know, something just happens. And yeah. I kind of like that. And, yeah. And it kind of sticks there. That's the yeah. exciting thing about it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. And is it, so that uh, led to Fatty Lumpkin? Did, how, yeah, did, well, how did that happen? And, well, uh, it was sort of... Um, uh, probably, yeah, around that time, uh, I was still working during the day then. I was working at a place called Athol Hill mm. and they were wholesalers for yep. uh, Fender Guitars, CBS Records, Rogers mm. Drums, Sure Mics, and all the guys that worked there were all ex-musos or musos. So it was a fan fantastic mm. place to work. And, and I remember one day at lunchtime, John Worrell and Al Cash walked in and they're standing at the counter. And... Um, you know, you're interested in forming a band? And I went, well, yeah, sounds like a great idea. Mm. I mean, you know, uh, so yeah, that's Fatty Lumpkin started. And, we've, and uh, well, he's playing bass. And I said, oh, they've got a guy called Roy Daniel. Mm. And uh, all musicians who I admired a lot. Mm. And uh, But the thing that we did from day one with the first lineup of Fatty Lumpkin was uh, we're going to be totally original. 
Mm. Wow, how do you do that? Mm. You know, like play three hour gigs with only four songs. Yes, <laughs> long songs. <laughs> so some of the songs were incredibly long. <laughs> uh, but we had a thing where uh, whoever set up first, and we didn't have roadies in those days, mm. uh, start playing. And so, uh, yeah, you know, if, the, if Roy set up first, he'd just start playing something and we'd all just join in. We had another song where uh, pick the key and make sure it's a different one to what I'm playing in and it would have been bizarre, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but somehow or other, we ended up working four or five nights a yeah. week, which probably in the early, early 70s, you know, it wasn't that hard because there were venues everywhere, mm. you know. And, uh, and, uh, and John Worrell, I guess, would have been the leader of the band and... Uh, he had a way of getting on with pub owners and mm. et cetera. So, yeah, we did okay you know, at first. How long did Fatty Lunkin actually go for? Because well, there was different lineups. There was a few different lineups, yeah. and th well, probably the, the totally all original thing wasn't going to work. Yeah. And I think it probably only lasted six months, maybe, maybe, maybe a year. I can't really mm. remember. And uh, so we all kind of went out um, different ways and then maybe about a year later we decided to do it again but we'll we'll throw in a few covers yeah and uh and so <clears throat> yeah probably i was in that lineup for about three months and uh yeah i kind of i left and uh and then six months later i was in the band again and, and <laughs> stayed for about four or five years <laughs> so i was in it three times i guess yeah, yeah, so. yeah. But there were, you know, it was kind of a little bit, rem uh, when I saw that movie, um, what was it called, Spinal Tap, yes. where they have different <laughs> career changes yes. and uh, we're going progressive and stuff. <laughs> well, I think Fatty Lumka was a bit like that, really, yeah. you know. Right, well, totally original. Now we're going to do a few covers and, and uh, uh, you know, and someone would get a new album and oh, let's play some mm. songs like this. And um, did, but, your, did your Marshall Amp go up to 11? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Like, uh, back in those days, I mean, well, we didn't have amps with a gauge, you know. No, and, that's right. And, and I didn't like distortion pedals, so it was, run it, full was, it was flat stick, yeah. yeah. And uh, that's why, yeah, we have a bit of a hearing problem these days. Yes. And, uh, but the 25 watts Lessians in those days, I think the 100 watt box rather than the latest 300 watt ones, sort of, they distorted a bit anyway. Yeah, something like that. And uh, mm. someone told me that JBLs were the speakers to get. So uh, I, I got four JBLs in my quad box mm. and, uh, and I thought, I'm still hearing distortion here, <laughs> you know. And, and then my dad said, uh, valves distort before mm. the speaker, you know. And, uh, mm. But he yeah. said, look, there's this little control in the amp. If It's called a bias, bias. control. And so yeah. I'd have that flat out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, everything was flat out. <laughs> and, uh, and there were a few complaints regarding the guitar player's volume. You know? <laughs> there always is, and I don't yeah, know why that is. Yeah, they're but, biased. Yeah. They? And so at one stage I had a 200 watt wasp, uh, two quads and uh, three alto, no, two tower horns and an alto horn wow. all hooked in there. Mm. And, uh, and with some kind of power amp, I can't remember what power amp it was, and it would have been phew, deafening, yeah. you know, but, um, but anyway, it was, I don't think it lasted too mm, long. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was, sanity prevailed. Yes. <laughs> and that sort of morphed into Everest and Saracen? Yeah, well, and, basically, yes. Fatty Lumpkin just kept going. Um, we toured over East a couple of times, and uh, I mean, there are thousands, you know, countless stories there with... Uh, just getting there really, you know, trucks breaking down, vans breaking down and guys going missing on the Nullarbor, you know, um, mm. but we did that and then John Worrell decided to go back to the UK mm. and, uh, uh, you know, and we, Des Jose at that time was kind of running the band or managing us and uh, so uh, we just said, look, uh, we're going to just stay together, John Ryder, Dave Little and myself, mm. but um, we'll call it Everest. And they still managed. All yeah, of he yeah. did. He yeah. did. Yeah. 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 So and, uh, but actually, probably, for me, really, that was like uh, a bit of a turning point because all of a sudden, we had this three-piece band. We didn't have a front man. Um, we were doing more of our own songs as yeah. well. We're still doing covers as yeah. well. You know, you had to play "Stairway to Heaven" and stuff yeah. like that. Otherwise, you couldn't get a gig at the Raffles. You know. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, and we 
because Fatty Lumpkin had sort of gone over east a couple of times. We were lucky that the agents over there remembered us from, from yep. then. And so I think Everest did pretty well. I think the second mm. time we went over there, uh, we got to the sound check in, in, uh, at a venue in Adelaide, the first stop, and there were all these people queuing up. And we thought, why well, is there another gig on? <laughs> and they're going, no, they're all queuing up to see you guys. And the promoter's telling us this. And he says, and I got you guys at a great price. Tell oh, this. no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So he had already done all the, all the deals, you know. And, yeah. uh, and so the promoter... Cleaned up. And, oh, it's cleaning up. So, yeah. So we were quite huge in Elizabeth, South Australia, which was yep. pretty similar to where I grew up, Quinana. And, and mm. uh, yeah, so we That's had... That's where the Angels were born, I think, out of Elizabeth. I think so, and yeah. Places, and and Cole Chisel came from yeah. there. And... Yeah. Uh, but I think the pubs loved us because they said, oh, well, you guys play. We need to get more kegs. And, you know, it's yeah. just fantastic. Yeah. They drink the place dry. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, everyone, worked out well, yeah. Everyone got the money apart from you guys. <laughs> the yeah. pubs, the promoters. That's right, yeah. Well, it's the same pretty, old story, isn't it? Yeah, pretty familiar story, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So after Saracen, you decided to, I, I don't know, you must have got some phone calls because you, you Oh, yeah, in. got a couple of phone calls, yeah, yeah but... Um, <laughs> What actually happened was, you know, it was, it's difficult being in Perth and yeah. then taking the band to Sydney. Um, we had a, you know, we had a truck, we had road crew to pay, mm. uh, you know, and the PA to, and, and, oh, you know, you know what it's like. Mm. And so, uh, um, and I think prob probably by the third time we went over, uh, it was getting really difficult. But we had a couple of uh, labels interested. And, uh, but they all, both of them wanted to put a front man with the band. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and that kind of didn't really sit well with us. Um, we, I met a couple of the guys that they suggested and, and, uh, and in the end, I think, yeah, well, bands break up. Yeah. And unfortunately, Saracen did. Mm. And I think uh, it wasn't until later when I was living there and, and um, the first band I played with after Saracen was Swanee, and I kept bumping into pumpers, punters all over the place mm. going, where's your band? You know, mm. like, we, we, you know, and uh, uh, even, yeah, later on, um, there was still so much interest in the band. It was unbelievable, mm. really. But you now all these things happen. So you played with Swanee and I think Sharon O'Neill. You toured with Sharon O'Neill yeah, as well. Yeah, um, I was very lucky uh, 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 that <laughs> it, it turned out that... Um, a lot of the guys that were uh, playing with Swanee uh, w could also go touring with Sharon. Mm. You know, well, I think it was the, the uh, one of the backing singers and the saxophone player. And uh, and I'd met a guy there called John Stevens who yeah. knew Sharon really well, and we were quite good friends in those days. And uh, he actually recommended me. So for, you know, it's yeah. Um, so I got a call and come along and. and uh, so I was lucky for the first couple of years I lived in Sydney, I was able to alternate between Swanee and Sharon mm. O'Neill and, uh, um, and started doing a bit of session work as well, mm. you know, here and there. Yeah. So I was able to survive. Uh, but I guess at the end of the day, it's not the same as being in your own band and playing your yeah. own music. So yeah. I missed that. With Saracen, yeah. it was a definite, uh, some nights were a real event. You know, yeah. if we had a good night, it was pretty awesome. Yeah. You know? Uh, just from a, how I felt, you know. Yes. Because um, then it was you owned it. It was yours. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, we 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 did a lot of our own stuff, mm. and uh, so uh, yeah, I guess that there are a few regrets there. Have you still got Sharon O'Neill's phone number? No. For Strawny, I can't remember because <laughs> he used to do certain things to himself, to his oh, body, right, when yeah. he used to see pictures of <laughs> Sharon. <laughs> no, no, I don't. No. <laughs> Um, but uh, but they were, uh, yeah, it was it was a good band. Mm. It was a really good yeah, band. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And um, is that Rose Tattoo came after that? Yeah. Um, well, I'd met Angry a few years before um, when I was in Everest, and we did a gig at the Bondi Lifesaver one night, and he happened to be the guest DJ. Yeah. And uh, and back in those days, uh, uh, if we got an encore, I used to go out on stage with a guitar, and I had this three hundred one where you could play for 30 Roll seconds. Roll and tape echo. Yeah, and yeah. then that would come roaring through the PA and then mm. I could play something over the top. And um, sometimes it worked really well. <laughs> <laughs> Other times, yeah, but anyway, this has not worked really well. And 
met angry and uh, and th it ended up that they rose tattoo that the, the original lineup mm. they stank at the same hotel mm. so uh, got to know each other kind of thing and then um, yeah while I was in Swanee I, I, I get this call and it was great mate you got a passport and I go yep he says well we need a guitarist <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but I couldn't do it which is pretty unfortunate because they were uh, in the States touring with Aerosmith and ZZ mm. Top. And I love ZZ Top yeah, you yeah. Know, and Aerosmith, you know. Mm. And uh, But uh, Angry doesn't remember it that way, but maybe it's got a bit kind of blurred over the years, but it was something like that. Yeah. And then about three months later, I uh, got another call and, uh, and I was a bit kind of... Um, concerned because I don't have any tattoos yeah <laughs> and uh you know and and also I'd heard a lot about uh oh just just stuff you know and uh but when I met the guys I knew angry but mm. uh, and uh and so it was a very you know professionally run organization yeah. and the first rehearsal that we had um yeah it was fantastic mm. the walls were melting yes. you know? like it was a Big yeah. sound, and um, and then, unfortunately, uh, there was a bit of an issue with uh, the drummer at that point, and then so, before you knew it, uh, it wasn't me joining Rose Tattoo; it was a completely new Rose Tattoo. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, in in some ways, look, that was great, um, but in other words, it was it was going to be pretty hard to mm. to replace, uh, yeah, icons. You mm. know, so and you wrote. In that band as well, didn't you? You wrote the song "Calling." That was a massive. Yeah, hit, wasn't yeah, it? yeah. So that was actually the first album I did with them was called "Southern Stars," and yeah. I wrote, co-wrote quite a few of those songs. And then the next album, um, same thing happened, mm. uh, and "Calling" was on that album. Um, but I left basically halfway through the recording mm. process. Yeah, right. Uh, or just as we were starting it, and uh, really, I thought um, at that point, for me, it was. Uh, yeah, look, I, I, I mean, you know, A, I didn't start playing guitar to, you know, become a rock star. I started playing because I love guitar. And yeah. and by then, um, you know, my influence was Shadows, Blues, a uh, bit of Jazz Fusion. And, and I had all these songs that I'd been writing that were all instrumental. Yeah. What do you do, you know? Yeah. And um, and I sort of thought, well, you either do it now or you, you never do it, really. So I took the, the decision to take a couple of years off and, and, and try and record my own mm. music. And I did. Yeah. And uh, while I was doing that, Matt Taylor rang me and Phil Manning was sick. Can you mm. fill in? I went, yep. yep. So I filled in for about four years. Yeah. <laughs> Phil, <laughs> so, yeah. He wasn't sick for that long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, he decided while he was sick to give it a miss. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, so I did three albums with Chain as well. Yeah. And, uh, but that was great because... As I said before, um, more blues I love and, the blues yeah, and of course. Uh, one of the best bands that I've ever seen in an, an Australian pub in the early days, definitely Chain. Yeah. And I remember seeing them playing at Beattie Park with uh, Deep Purple, Free, Santana, I think that was there. And Chain, this Australian band, was mm. fantastic. Mm. Really, really good. So, um, uh, yeah, and yeah, there I am, 15 years later, I'm in the band, so... So I don't have to ask you that question. Oh, sorry, cross mate. That. No, it's cool. I'll cross that one out. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, that's great. And so um, after that, you started doing jingles. You had the studio. I yeah, well, um, so, I mean, I tried putting a, a John Meyer band together. Um, but by then, it was already like early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, yeah, 90, mm. 91. And, and already then, you could see... Uh, the, the venues were half full and yep. it was tough to get a gig. Yes. And so I thought, well, I better do some teaching. And, and while I was at it, um, someone, uh, you know, a, a very good friend of mine uh, asked me to put a little jingle together for uh, SciTech, I think I was. Yeah. And I did. And, uh, and then I got another little gig and, and then I, you know, um, bought a bit more equipment and then... Uh, so I did that for maybe 10 years, yep. just sort of, and my little studio that I, you know, built in the backyard, well, that kind of, yeah, it was tiny, but we managed to yeah. do things in there and, uh, yeah. So. Well, I know you love your footy uh, and I know you're a fantastic West Coast Eagles fan. Absolutely. Good on you for that. Yeah. That's great. Oh. <laughs> 
You, I think you actually did a Dockers jingle, didn't you, or something? Uh, yeah, I played on. I didn't right. write it. Yeah. And um, did that just? But I did a bit you, of music right? for the Dockers. Yeah, How did and you get we through had that. Slim was there one night doing some stuff for us. <laughs> um, yeah. So and uh, but uh, when I'd, I'd pulled down my Eagles paraphernalia while the, the Dockers marketing people were in there. And, <laughs> Um, but I, I, when I played on their theme song, that was that was at Planet. So, mm, yeah. uh, but I didn't write that or anything like yeah, that. Um, yeah. Just played guitar on it, and, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And so, you, what are you doing now? You... Well, uh, I'm still uh, recording. Yeah. Um, but these days, it's it's mainly me. Yeah. Um, about six years ago, I mean, I've always taught guitar, even when I was in Saracen. Mm. I used to teach. Well, su supplement the income, but people used to ask me, and yeah. I go, yeah, sure, you know. These are some of the albums that you've written. I just yeah. hold these up um, for Strawny or Strachan, some people call him Phil Strachan. <laughs> That's um, John Myers Blues Express. I think you can get uh, this one here, the Shaman at um, Pro Copy, which is where we're sitting now. Doctor Welby will look after you if you if you give him a call. And um, here's another one. I oh, know you've got plenty of them. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I love the new one. Yeah, I like the artwork. I do yeah. that myself. John Meyer has got <laughs> the new one. <laughs> that is not the artwork. I just no. thought I'd bring it in. It's It's been mixed, yeah. yet to be mastered. Um, yeah. Artwork underway. Um, but there's a couple of other albums. I'm doing a project with a guy called Craig Pinkney. Oh, yeah. Um, so we'd, we've got a, an album's worth of 80s style rock, I guess you call it. Yeah. Um, and there's a blues one kind of, Everything's being recorded for that, but it has has to be mixed yet, and so yeah, I'm I'm still recording. Um, I'm I'm still kind of active in a creative way. Yeah. Um, but about six years ago, I started teaching one day a week at Sacred Heart College, and then it turned into two days a week and three days a week. Now it's four days a week. Sometimes it's every day. You enjoying that? Uh, I am. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I love teaching the kids. Yeah. And I have, um, amongst the students, oh yeah, there's about four or five ones. fantastic yeah. little guitar players there. And uh, I love seeing them. Uh, and uh, there's also a couple of bands there that I instruct. So it's a challenge. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, getting to work at eight in the morning is a bit tricky. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> you know, but, you know. Um, but we're, we're doing it. Yeah. And... Uh, so yeah, um, that's going pretty well. Yeah, got this guitar here, hmm. which is nearly in tune actually. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. But we get all our guests to sign it, and okay. we're actually um, I don't know whether you want to sign the front or the back. We we'll go in the front for you. Uh, if we can, is that your name there? Yeah, just, oh, well, just, just get next right to me, mate. There you yeah, go. That'll do. Yeah, just underneath there. Thanks, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there Thanks, you go. mate. And we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're Hopefully, uh, beautiful. It's fantastic. <laughs> we're going to um, auction this one off. Great. Um, at Telethon this year. If we're lucky enough, uh, Mr. Jamie McCandy is going to help us do that. Fantastic. In the uh, rock and roll segment. So hopefully we can get five grand or something. Mm. There's about 30 very good names on there so mm. far. And we should have some more. So, Well, at some point, that's going to be a bargain. So... Favourite band of all time? Uh, I, I think that's impossible. Impossible? I, I really think. I mean, uh, I've gone through periods where Led Zeppelin were my favourite band and then it was, you know, Jean-Luc Ponty and the All-Stars or something, mm. and, and you know, and, and uh, Little Feet. Yeah. You know, favourite band of all time. Yeah, just too hard. Yeah. Just too hard. If you were stranded on a desert island, and there's just a gramophone there that you could wind because there is no power. Mm. What album What album would you take to listen I, to? I is saw this on the on? question list and like, <laughs> you know, this is really hard, you know. Yeah. I think, look, if it, if it had to be an album, you know, I'd probably, it probably would be John Mayle and the Blues Breakers yep. and Peter Green, yep. I'd say. Fantastic. Um, if I could bring two albums. I reckon we could... You have two I'd, I'd probably bring one of my own. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, and then, uh, but I don't know. But probably, if it was one, it would probably have to be that one. Yeah. So you've said before um, your favourite um, Matt Taylor 
being your favourite band that you saw live. Yeah. What, have you got a Perth band that you, uh, you saw live? Yeah, that you, I think that's a tricky one as well. Yeah. Look, in the early 70s, there was a band called Sid Rumpo. Yeah. And they had a guy called Bob Searles, an mm. American guy, singing and playing. Yep. I loved his voice. Yeah. And they had another guitar player, John Hood. Yeah. And every time he played harp, I'd, I'd get goose yeah. pimples. And I... I, I yeah, and they played a lot of their own stuff as well. I think they did an album yep. with Mushroom as well, one of the first yep. bands they signed. Um, Favourite Perth band? Uh, Bakery were a cool band. Yep. and I think, uh, yeah, I'd probably say Sid Rumpo. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like, um, I used to go and see them when on nights off. And yep. so, and other, you know, I've seen other bands, obviously, but I think I kind of really made it a point mm. if I had a night off, I'd go and see them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And um, just recently, you got up on stage with some of your old cohorts. That's right, yeah. Mick Lindini yeah. and Rick Whittle and yep. did a concert for Peko. That's right. A very enjoyable concert yeah. for a, a great cause. Yeah. And, uh, well... Highlight of the night was you and Dave Hole going toe-to-toe well, uh, in uh, Rocky Mountain Way, I think it was. It was, it was yeah, just I can't great. remember what song it was, actually, it's but, uh, look, that's always good fun. And, yeah. And, uh, um, I, I think Dave and I, we've done that before, but wow, it would have yeah. been long time oh, ago. early 80s, mm. I think maybe, uh, yeah, anyway, it was a long time ago. What was your favourite TV show growing up? Uh, what's, oh, Tricky. Oh, they're all tricky, aren't they, for you? <laughs> <laughs> I still like the old westerns, Rawhide and Gunsmoke yeah. and stuff and F Troop. Yeah. But I, I still like the Bugs Bunny things, yes. the cartoons, <laughs> Daffy Duck and uh, uh, yeah, the road runner guy yeah. and uh, the, the guy with the two guns. What was yeah. it? Um, uh, uh, Fog, not, um, yeah, Yosemite. Yeah. Yosemite Sam. Yeah. I paid my two bits to sit hard <laughs> dive and I've got to see it. Like, Rabbit, you're it. Yeah, I still love Bugs Bunny. What about yeah. Foghorn Leghorn? Oh, Foghorn Leghorn, yeah, it was fantastic. I'll say, I, I say that, boy. This ain't no chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great, yeah. Yeah, oh, good. Yeah. So, well, I say, boy, what does the future hold for you? Oh, well, hopefully we can hang in there and uh, um, try and finish another album. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I kind of feel um, there's plenty of stuff, ideas floating around. Mm. It's just getting the time to do it you know um, unfortunately you, you, these days you get bogged down with little things like uh, earning a living and, yes, and mowing the lawn like and cleaning it. the pool uh, you know what I mean yeah exactly right uh, yeah um, so but yeah continue to be creative so what is the platform um, our viewers can uh, purchase your albums from apart from pro copy here with Dr. Dr. Marcus Welby over there uh, yeah, uh, um, say that again. I, I missed that. So here, it's the eleven problem. What is the platform that where people can buy your music, oh, your albums? Your I have a website. Yeah. Um, which is sadly out of date. Um, I uh, currently it's being fixed, but the yeah. website's still up. Yeah. People can um, yeah drop me a line via that. What What is the address of that it's website? It's just uh, www.johnmayer.net.au. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay, um, any other plugs that you feel like giving? Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'd, I'd like to see you interview Roy Daniel. Okay. That'd no, be good. That'd be great. We'll get Roy, uh, Roy I'd on the show. i to see him up here. Yep. Uh, um, we definitely will. Do you have any unfulfilled ambitions, John? Uh, no, no, not really. Uh, not really, no. no. Not a bucket list? No, like Out no, of a plane or no, no, nothing no, like think, that? No, uh, no, I think... No, not really. Um, uh, no, uh, yeah, it would have been good to be a rocket scientist, maybe. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you could. Um, no. Do you collect anything? No. Nothing at no, all? No. I think if I had a, um, a lot more money, I'd probably collect a few more cars. Yeah. You know, but uh, no, not really. What's no. your favourite car? Is it? Oh, favourite. That'd be hard, you know. Yeah. I think the favourite car I owned was a, a beautiful old XB Falcon Coupe that I had in mm. the late 70s. Yeah. Um, Mick O'Donnell helped me paint it, 14 coats of midnight black. and Mick O. And yeah, <laughs> I had a, a V8, of course, and yeah. the biggest wheels you could get, yeah. lowered, you know, and 
uh, yeah, that was great to drive around in that. I wish I still had it. Hooning around, laps around oh, the city. Yeah. And oh, all yeah, all lots of, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Drive around. Collecting tickets. And yes. tickets for sure. <laughs> so what would you put on your gravestone, John? Uh, go to the West Coast Eagles. Yeah. You know. You are a legend. I couldn't think of anything, you know, really like a... That's, that's great. That's yeah, great. I think it's a pretty good one, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'd go with that one. Go to the West Coast Eagles. Is there something that we don't know about you that that you could tell us, or or is that a tricky... I used to be a Collingwood supporter. Oh, did you really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I always followed Swan Districts in the Waffle, and we never lived anywhere near uh, Midland, you know, yeah. but, uh, but I, I, I don't know, and I just followed... Collingwood and the VFL because they're black and white and and I remember living in Sydney having reading the Sydney Morning Herald one day the sports bait and the little tiny article going WA team to join the VFL the Eagles my That's new it. team so yeah. yeah I used to be a Collingwood supporter you still have a soft spot for them when no, you watch them no no, no 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 I was just, no 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 hate everybody <laughs> <laughs> mm. Just want to tell our viewers, if you like uh, the show, uh, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and uh, we'll keep you up to date with what's going on. John, look, absolutely fantastic to have you in here, get a bit of an insight into your life and, and your experiences and stories, and hmm. um, for, very nice to have you in. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Good on you, Gary. Thank you. Good on you. Thank you, viewers. We'll see you next time.